Chapter 4, Section 4. Okay, Chapter 4, Section 4. This is factoring quadratic expressions. Okay, factoring. What does that mean? Okay, in regular terms, it just means doing the FOIL method. You guys remember FOIL? Yeah. Algebra 1. First outer inner last. Okay, you're doing FOIL backwards. Okay, if you don't know the FOIL method, you are going to be pretty confused. All right, so you should probably review it. Yes, we will review it. Okay, just a minute. Now, a monomial, just a review. Okay, a monomial is the product, okay, of numbers and variables. What's product mean? Uh, the multiplication. So it's just like 2AB, that's a monomial. Okay, or you could have 4, or you could have x squared, or 3x squared, or x cubed, or whatever. Okay, those are monomials, the product of numbers and variables. A binomial is when you have two monomials attached to each other by a plus or minus sign. You can have like x squared plus 3, or x cubed, or 3x cubed minus 4ab. Okay, those are all binomials, two monomials attached by a plus or minus sign. Okay, then you can do three and call it trinomial, and then you can keep going and they're polynomials. Okay? Those are just reviews. You yeah. should know most of those. Yeah, now, let's talk about FOIL. Okay, some of you might have had teachers that didn't call it FOIL. Back when I was in high school, they didn't call it FOIL. What they call okay, it? we called it... I don't even know. We called it, but I, I FOIL, first time I heard FOIL was in college. Foil. Okay, the word FOIL. But, but right now, most teachers use what's called FOIL. Okay? What it means is you multiply the first terms by each other to get them outside the parentheses. The first terms are x and x. x times x is x squared. Then you multiply the outer terms. So x and 6. So plus 6 times x. Okay? And then you have... The inner terms, negative 3 and x, excuse me, negative 3x. And then I have the last term, negative 3 and 6, which is minus 18. Or 6, negative 18. Okay, first outer, inner, last. Those are the terms you're multiplying together. That's what FOIL means. Now, you have to simplify and combine your like terms. Do I have like terms here? Yeah, the x's. This is an x and this is an x. This is an x squared, so it doesn't, I can't combine it with an x. Something different. So I have x squared plus 6x minus 3x. It's just 3x minus oh, 18. Yeah. That's FOIL. You should hopefully did that in Algebra 1 at some point. You just don't remember. Okay, some of you don't. But if you did tons and tons of it, you probably do. Now, in algebra 2, we have to go backwards. Okay, so foiling. In algebra 1, a lot of it was foiling. In algebra 2, you do foiling backwards. Okay, so when you multiply two numbers together, in order to foil, we need to talk about how do you get a positive outcome. So just tell me, if you multiply two numbers, Brooke, what do you know about the two numbers in order to get a positive answer? Or they both have to be negative. Okay? So when I multiply two numbers together, they have to have positive, positive, or negative, negative in order to get a positive outcome. Okay? Positive 4 times positive 4 is positive 16. Negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Okay? Just remember that. You're going to use that all the time. When you multiply two numbers together, how do you get a negative outcome? Well, you have to have a positive times a negative, or a negative times a positive. Negative 4 times positive 3 gives you negative 12. Negative 5 times positive 3 gives me negative 15. Negative 3 times positive 5. Any way I go, one has to be negative, one has to be positive. Then my answer will be negative. Okay? You have to remember that in order to be able to factor. Now, here's the steps factor. Here's the steps. So we'll go ahead and use these steps. Okay? You can stick them beside each other when we do our first example. Okay? When we do our first example, use these steps. Step number one. Okay? I always like to make 
my parentheses to start off, okay? Because I know I have to end up with two binomials, okay? Yeah. Step number one, divide your x squared term. I think you have to add the square to your notes. I forgot to put the square in there. So step number one, I'm going to take my x squared, or it might be a t, or it might be a d, whatever it is, in this case it's an x, and split them up. So that you know if you would multiply the first terms in FOIL, you'd get an x squared. Okay? x times x is x squared. That's step number one. Step number two, check the second sign. So I'm going to go over here to my trinomial and check the second sign. Step number two. I know it's a positive, okay? Now, think to yourself, okay, when I FOIL, the last term is the last two numbers multiplied together, right? If we go back and look at our FOIL page, okay, in order to get this number right here, I have to take the negative 3 times the positive 6 to get negative 18, right? Do you see that? So think to yourself, okay, how do I get a positive number if I multiply these two? What kind of numbers give me a positive answer if I multiply? Positive, positive, negative. Positive or positive, negative or negative. Okay? One of those two, I either have to have plus plus or minus minus inside. How do I choose which one? Well, you go to step three. Okay? Step three, different color. I have to check the first sign. Check the first sign because you know the first sign in FOIL is the sum of the outer and the inner terms. The outer and the inner terms is the sum. Correct? So if I look at my problem, I have to get a positive number with the sum of the outer and the inner term. So what kind, if you add two numbers together, how do you get a positive number if you add a positive positive or a negative negative? Can you add a positive number to a positive number and get a positive number? Yeah. Can you add a negative number to a negative number and get a positive number? No, you can't add negative 3 plus negative 3 and get positive. Negative plus a negative is always negative. Positive plus a positive it's always positive. So think to yourself, okay, if this sign is positive and this sign is positive, these two have to be positive. If this sign is positive and this sign is negative, these two have to be negative. Okay, and you're going to see that in the video. They actually tell you that. Okay, and that's the case. So I know because the sum is positive, I have to use plus plus of the first one. Okay? Alright, now we go to our next step. Okay. Step number four. Step number four says write out the factors for the third term. My third term is 20. What numbers can I multiply together to get 20? 1 and 20, 2 and 10, 4 and 5. That's it. That's step number four. Write out the factors of the third term. Step five. Find two factors whose sum, or when you add them together, is the middle term coefficient. So look at your middle term coefficient. What is your middle term coefficient? Nine. What two numbers in my factors add up to nine? 1 and 20, 2 and 10, or 4 and 5? 4 and 5. So that means 4 goes in here, 5 goes in here. Now, step number 6, check and make sure. Okay, how do I check? Well, look at your outer and your inners. Outer and inner. 5x plus 4x gives me 9x. Okay, then check your, out, your last term. 4 times 5 gives me 20. That means I'm good. Okay? Check your answers. Check your outer and your inners. Make sure they add up. Then check your last terms. Make sure when you multiply them together, you get your last term. Right here.
Okay? You did this freshman year? You may have. Some of you may have, some of you may not have. That's okay if you did. Okay, we're going to do another one. Okay, let's do another one. Step number one, divide your x squared. So I have x, x. Step two, check your second sign. It's a negative. That means in order to get a negative product, you have to multiply a negative number by a positive number or a positive number times a negative number. Now, it does not matter which one you put where. You can put negative positive here, you can put positive negative, whatever you want. They are flip floppable. Okay, that's a made up word. They are flip floppable. I like it though. It's kind of fun to say. Flip floppable. Now, what does matter is once you get to know what, which one to put where. Okay, I know one has to be positive, one has to be negative. So then I have to look at my first sign. So this is my first sign. And I need a positive number. Now, when you add a negative number to a positive number, how do you get an outcome of a positive number? What has to be true? What? Yeah, the positive number has to be higher. So when I fill in this and this, I know this one has to be the higher number. Okay? I know that one has to be the higher number. So let's go ahead and let's look at what numbers we're looking at here. So we're going to step four. Write out the factors of 72. I have 1 and 72, 2 and 36, 3 and 24, uh, 4 and, wait, is that right? Yes. 4, no, 4 goes, is it right? What, what is it? 18, thank you. 5 doesn't, 6 doesn't, 6 does, 6 and 12. So I write out all my factors. Now, when I add them together, I have to remember the bigger number has to have the positive sign, the smaller number has to have the negative sign. So this number here has to be negative, and this number here has to be positive when I find the sum. So can you find two numbers where the top one is a negative and the bottom one is a positive that add together to give you positive 14? Yeah, 18 and 4. Because if this is a negative 4, okay, and this is a positive, if you add those together, you're going to get positive 14. So I know that my negative 4 has to go here, my positive 18 has to go here. Check your answer. Okay. When you check, look at your outer and your inner. I have negative 4x plus 18x. Negative 4 plus 18 gives me positive 14x. Exactly what I have. Okay. Then check your last. 18 and negative 4 gives me negative 72. And I'm right. So it has to be x plus 18 and x minus 4. Okay, let's do another one. This one's a little bit harder because of this negative sign right here. If you start out with a negative sign, change all your signs and take the negative away. Okay, what do you mean by that? I just mean factor out a negative one. Take a negative one away and rewrite it and change all the signs. That way you don't have to deal with a negative x. So when you split them up, one has to be negative, one positive, and you got a lot of signs to switch. Okay? I don't even want you to have to deal with that because that makes it really hard. So just pull out that negative and change all the signs. So I change this sign, I change this sign, and I change this sign, and I put the negative one. If you were to distribute that negative one back in, it would just change it to the original problem. I don't want to deal with a negative x squared. I want to take away that negative x squared and just make it x squared by doing this. Now, I can go to my steps. Wait, why is that harder? Because if you have a negative x here, okay, if you don't have this negative one here, it's going to change your last sign, your first, your last sign, and then you have to think about it when you add and subtract. Does that make sense? 
I don't want to do that. I don't want to deal with that. I want my science to always work. Okay? Now, look at, after you split your axes, that was step one. Step two, look at your second sign. It's positive. If it's a positive number, what does that mean? Positive, positive, or negative, negative. How do I know which one? Go look at your other sign. Okay, go to step three. Okay, step three is what kind of sign? Negative, so which one do I use? Negative, negative. Because step three is a negative, I have to use negative, negative. Step four, what's step four? Factor. Factor. Find your factors of 12. Okay, it's going to be 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Now, which ones, if they're both negative, which ones are going to add up to a negative 13? 12. 12 and 1. So I know that it doesn't matter which one goes where. No, because they're both negative. Okay, so if we go 1, 12 or 12, 1, it doesn't really matter. Once you're done, check. Okay, check your outers, check your inners. I have negative 12 plus negative 1 gives me negative 13. Then I have negative 12 times negative 1 gives me positive 12. I'm checked, I'm good, I'm done. Okay? Are you okay? All right, here's what's going to happen next. I'm going to give you your homework. If you want to start it, you've got this stuff, you've done it before, and you're ready, you want to get it started, go ahead. Open up your book and get started. I'm going to do a couple more problems. Okay, for those of you that are still confused, that's fine. Try to do it on your own if you can. Grab, grab your book, okay, write it down, try to get it on your own, see if you can do it. If you can't, then follow me, okay? I'm going to start with number 14. So go ahead and get your books out and get started.